بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Let us continue this section 4.1 where what we did. We finished the critical numbers, finding the critical numbers. Now we're talking about finding mainly the absolute maximum, absolute minimum. What is the idea? What is the guidelines for finding extreme or absolute maximum, absolute minimum on a closed interval? We'll find the critical numbers. We evaluate F at each critical number. We evaluate F at each endpoint because we're talking about continuous over a closed interval. Then the, the least will be the minimum and the greatest will be the maximum. Let us do examples. Yeah. Now I have this function, sine x plus cosine x. This is continuous over a closed interval, over this interval, 0 to pi. Okay, so my first step is to find the critical numbers. What are the critical numbers? I need to find f prime. That will be cosine x minus sine x. Okay, this is always differentiable. I mean, this function is always differentiable, so no need to worry about it when f prime does not exist to find the critical numbers. So I'll check only when f prime is equal to zero. That means cosine x equals sine x. Over this interval, when cosine x equals sine x, that will be in the first quadrant only. And that means x equal pi over 4, because I'm talking about the first and the second. The second sine is positive, cosine is negative, so they cannot be equal to each other. So this is the only angle where they are equal to each other. So my next step, find f at pi over 4. That will be what? Square root of 2 over 2 plus the square root 2 over 2, which is square root of 2. Okay. Now we'll find f at the end point. f at 0 will be what? Sine 0, which is 0, plus cosine 0, which is sine 0, plus cosine 0. This is 0 plus 1, which is 1. Now, f of pi, yeah, be careful here, that will be sine pi plus cosine pi, which is 0 minus 1. Cosine pi is a minus 1. So, yeah, this is, this is minus 1. Okay, now I need to decide which is the absolute maximum, which is the least, which is the, the, the greatest. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is will be the least. So this is the absolute minimum. So absolute minimum minus one at x equal pi. And this will be the greatest. I know square root of two is more than one. So I have absolute maximum. Square root of two at x equal pi over four. Okay. So I said an absolute maximum at x equal pi. He doesn't want or oh, he doesn't care what will be the absolute, he want at what, according to the answers. And this is absolute minimum at x, absolute minimum at x equal by, yes. Absolute maximum at x equal by over four, yes. So that will be the answer. Okay, let me move to another problem. The sum of the absolute maximum, absolute minimum, he want the sum of these two for this function, okay? So it will be f prime, First, I find the critical numbers through f prime. f prime will be what? 2 cosine x minus 2 sine 2 x. Uh -huh. And that will be 2 cosine x minus sine 2 x is what? 2 sine cosine minus 4 sine x cosine x. Okay. Now take 2 cosine x common factor. I'm getting 1 minus 2 sine x. 
By the way, this is just the first quadrant. Huh? You put in the first quadrant. So I'll make this equal to zero. So I have cosine x equal zero or sine x equal half. Sine x equal zero means x equal pi over two. And they have x here is pi over six. Okay. So I need to check now. Yeah, by the way, this is an end point. So I check it either as a critical number or as an end point. Yeah, both are in this interval, okay? So I check f of pi over two or pi over six here. Pi over six will be what? Two sine pi over six plus cosine two times pi over six, which is pi over three. Okay, so that gives me two times half, which is one plus half. That's good, good numbers, three over two. Now I'll check the end point. I can check this also as a critical number or just I leave it for the end point. If at zero, what will be f at zero? Sine zero is zero, because sine zero is one, so it will be one. Three, f at pi over two, that's three, yeah. Sorry, this is my second step. This is my third step. Okay. If at pi over two, will be what? Two sine pi over two. Sine pi over two is one, so that will be two. Cosine pi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me let me do it in steps. Yeah, to be sure about the calculation. So I have two sine pi over two plus cosine pi, pi over two times two, which is pi. So that will be two minus one, which is one. Uh -huh. So what is the absolute uh, maximum? That will be the absolute maximum. And what is the absolute minimum? That or this one, both are okay. These are absolute minimum, but at different, at different values. I don't care about that since he wants what? He wants the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum, he wants the sum of these two. So I have one plus three over two, which give me what? Five over two. Yeah. So this is the answer. Okay. As you notice, just we'll do examples. We'll do the calculation. Yeah. So different functions. Yeah. Now the function is with the E. He wants the absolute maximum and absolute minimum. He wants this is he called the absolute maximum capital M and the absolute minimum small m. Okay, and he just, he want them. Okay, let us do the calculation. Yeah, the function is continuous over this interval. Actually, it's continuous everywhere. There's no restriction in X. Okay, now I find F prime. I need the chain rule. E minus X square minus 2X times derivative of this, which is what? Minus 2X minus 2. Make it equal to zero. Yeah, this is differentiable everywhere actually. So we have what? Minus e is minus x squared minus two x times minus two actually x minus one. Yeah. So when I make it equal to zero, this is never zero. So I have x equal one. Is it in the interval? Yes, it's in the interval. Okay. So this is my first step, which is a critical number. So this is a critical number. Number two, I'll find f at one. f at one is what? e minus one minus two. Hmm? Be careful, yeah. It's f e minus one minus two, and that give me e. Okay. Now I'll check the endpoints. f at zero, that will be e to the power zero e to the power zero, which is one. Okay. If at what, three, that will be e to the minus what? Nine minus six. So that will be e to minus three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is the height? Which is, by the way, this is one over e cubed. So now I can see it. What is the least? This is, will be the maximum, which is two points. So for sure it's more than one and more than more than the other one. So this is absolute maximum. So capital M is what is E? Uh, 
and this is will be the smallest since this is less than one. One is one over one. Okay, so I have this one is less. So this is the absolute minimum. So a small m will be e s minus three or one over e s three, which is this is the answer. Okay. Yeah, um, as you know, it's calculation. Then you need to decide which one is bigger, which one is smaller. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why I have this question here, but it's okay. He says the function, this function, has a local maximum or local minimum at x equal minus one. That means what? F prime at minus one equals zero. That means minus one is a critical number, but the function is differentiable everywhere. So it will be f prime at minus one equals zero. Local maximum of this, that means f prime at minus three equals zero. We want the inflection point. Forget about this question. This is not, this is 4.4. Where, where I need just the f double prime to be zero. And there is a change in, we need to check f double prime. There is a change before the number run and after it. Yeah, I leave it for, this is 4.4. So sorry for having this question here. Okay. Yeah, let us continue doing this. He want what? Capital M absolute maximum, small m absolute minimum. He want the sum of these two. And this is the function which is continuous everywhere actually. So continuous over this interval. Yeah, not everywhere. I need x to be positive. Okay. And then negative, I mean. So we'll find the critical numbers. I have f prime is what? Uh, it's a product. So you have 1 over 2 root x times x minus 3. The derivative of the second is 1 times square root of x. In other words, this is 2 root x times x minus 3 plus 2x. So it will be 3x minus 3 over 2 root x. Okay. So what are the critical numbers? I'll make this equal to 0. I have f prime equal zero, so I have x equal one. I have x equal one. Yeah. Okay. And f prime does not exist. By by by, I mean, uh, by the way, this is in the in the interval. Okay. When x equal zero, which is also in the closed interval, so it's an endpoint. So I can deal with it as an endpoint or as a critical number. Okay. So my first, my third step, since it's part of the domain, part of the the domain of the function or or the interval defined, we define the function. So now we'll find f at one. Uh, I will deal with it as an endpoint. Huh? F of one would be what? One. Yeah, times minus two. That will be minus two. Okay, now the endpoints. F at zero. Oh, sorry. This is two. This is three. According to the steps we have. F at zero is zero. F at four, that will be two times one, which is two. Okay, so what is the absolute maximum? This is the absolute maximum. And this is the absolute minimum. So this is capital M is two and small m is minus two. Add them, two minus two, which is zero. So that will be the answer. The sum of the absolute maximum, absolute minimum for this function, or diff over this interval, continuous. Very clear. Okay, so I need first to find the critical numbers, differentiate what you will get, four x cubed minus four x. Yeah, I'll make it equal to zero because this is differentiable everywhere. It's just a polynomial. 4x, x squared minus 1 equal 4x, x minus 1, x plus 1. Make it equal to zero. So I have x equal zero. x equal 1, x equal minus 1. This is in the interval. This is also in the in the interval. This is in the closed interval. So, so it's an... an uh, critical number, but I will deal with it as an endpoint. Okay, so this is my first step. Second step, I check f at this critical number, f at zero is what? Zero, zero, two. 
We want what? The sum. Okay. F at 1 will be what? F at 1 it will be 1 minus 2 plus 2, which is 1. Okay. Now we'll check the end point. Uh, this is, as I said, this is, can be critical and end points at the same time. So this is in the interval. Okay. F at minus 1 will be what? 1 minus 2 plus 2, which is 1. F at, what is it? 2. It will be what? 16 minus 8 plus 2, which is 10. So what is the absolute maximum? This is the maximum. And what is the absolute minimum? This is the minimum. The sum will be 11 at uh, 10 by 10 plus 1, which is 11. That's it. Yeah. The absolute maximum absolute minimum for this function. Okay, let us do this function. Yeah, between minus one to one. Actually, this is always positive. So we have no, no nothing to worry about about this. Yeah, because this is x squared plus x plus one over four plus three over four. And this is a complete square. This is x plus half all the square plus three over four. So this is always positive. Cannot be zero and non negative. And 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 yeah, cannot be zero or, or negative. So it's always positive. Okay. So it's continuous. This function is continuous actually everywhere since it's defined everywhere. Okay. So I'll find F prime, I'll find the critical numbers. We'll do F prime. F prime will be what? This is X squared plus X plus one. This is two X plus one. Yeah. So to check F prime equal zero. So I'm getting two X plus one equal zero. So X equal minus half. Is it in the domain of this? The domain of F is what? Orient numbers, huh? since this is always positive, okay, for any x. So it's in the domain. So it's this a critical number, okay. Now, if prime does not exist, this is cannot be equal to zero. This is never be zero, as I explained here. Yeah. So this is x squared plus six. I just try to make a complete square. So I have a square plus a number, which is always non-negative, always, always, non uh, always positive, okay. Now, I check f at minus half. Now be careful with the calculation. He want what he want the absolute minimum, by the way. Okay, so that will be len 1 over 4 minus half plus 1, which is 3 over 4 minus 2 over 4. That will be in 3 over 4. Yeah, this is 2 over 4. This is 4 over 4. So I have 1 minus 2 plus 4. Six, uh, 1 minus 2 plus four, so it's five minus two, so it will be three over four. Okay. Now let me check the, the, the end points he gave me, f of minus one. f of minus one will be len, len of what? One minus one plus one, and that is what? Zero, hmm? that will be zero. Okay, what else I need? The other end point, uh, be careful with the len, f of one, it will be len 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is len 3. Okay. Now, what is the, the smallest number or the least of these three values? Yeah. Be careful. This is the graph of len. Okay. This is the graph of len above. I have... The, the len is equal to zero here. Where is? I'm not graphing this. I'm graphing len in general. Okay. Or oh, let me let me state it in a different way. This is len of one. Len is a, is a continuous function. It's an increasing function actually. So as you increase the values of x, the values of y should be increased. If you notice, this is three. This is one. This is three over four. So what is the smallest? That will be the smallest. Yeah, because three over four is less than one and less than three. So this is the absolute minimum. Not, not the one. Huh? So the answer is this one. Yeah, as I said, we are trying different functions. Now, it's a quotient rule, this one. If capital M absolute minimum, he want what? 40 by 8 M minus 3 M. Who cares? Okay, so let me do F prime. Let's take a numbers. 
Yeah, is the function continuous? Yes. Actually, this is this is the complete square minus x plus one over four plus four, which is fifteen over four. Yeah. So this is a complete square. So this is never be zero. This is always never be zero. This one. So it's continuous everywhere. So I just I need to check one to five, which is for sure it will be continuous. Now let me do f prime. F prime the derivative of x is one times the the denominator minus x times the derivative of the denominator, which is two x minus one. All of this, all over this function squared. Okay, so it will be the numerator. It will be x squared minus x plus four minus two x squared plus x over this value. Yeah, which is what this is cancelled, which is good. That give me what? Minus x squared plus two over this. Minus squared plus four, sorry. Yeah. I have x equal plus or minus two in my mind. Okay. So this is equal to zero. So that implies x squared is equal to four, which implies x equal minus two or x equal to this is does not belong to the interval so i will not consider so this is out of the picture this belongs to the interval so we'll consider this only yeah this is my first step second step f of two yeah do the calculation two over four minus two plus four so it will be two over what Four plus four, eight minus two, that will be six. That will be one over three. Yeah, I think because that we have this three. That's okay. Let us see. Now I'll check the endpoints. F at one. That will be one over one minus one over plus four. So it's one over four. Very clear. F of five. That will be five over. Over what? Twenty-five. Yeah. That will be five over. 25 minus 5, which is 20 plus 4, that 24. 5 over 24. Mm. Now, which one is bigger? Which one is smaller? 1 over 3, 1 over 4, 5 over 24. Yeah. Which one is bigger? Yeah. Sure, uh, 1 over 4 is less than 1 over 3. Okay, yeah. So what about this number with one over four? Who is bigger? Yeah. So I need to compare it with this number. So we'll make this over twenty-four, which is six over twenty-four. So one over four also greater than five over twenty-four. Yeah. One over three. So you need you need to compare it. Yeah, we tried it in the same in the same format. So one over three, one over four for sure. One over four less than one one over three. Now to check this with this, this with this, I need to make this in the uh, over twenty four so I can compare it. Now this six is greater than four, uh, greater than five. I mean, okay. So what will be the the smallest? This is will be the smallest. This is the the m small m absolute minimum. And this is the capital M, absolute maximum. What they want? They want 48 small m minus 3m. Yeah, minus 3 capital M. So this is 48, 5 over 24. So it's very clear why he put 48, because this is 2, this is 1. Minus 3, 1 over 3. Yeah, this is more clear. OK, so this is cancelled. So I have what? 10, 2 times 5, 10 minus 1, which is 9. So the answer is 9. Okay. Now, as I say, different function, different flavors. Okay. Now I need this function, which is continuous, very clear, over this interval. Okay. So I need to find f prime, the critical numbers. f prime will be 3x squared minus 12 which is 3x squared minus 4 
which is 3x minus 2 times x plus 2. Yeah, take this, x minus 2. So I make f prime equal 0. I'm getting what? x equal minus 2 or x equal 2. This does not belong to the interval. So this is out of the picture. This is belongs to the interval, so it's okay. So I find f at 2. Yeah, do the calculation. That will be 8. 8 minus 24 plus 2, which is what? 10 minus, that will be minus 14. You want this number, strange number. Okay, I'll find uh, the end point. F at 0, very clear too. And F at 3 will be what? Yeah, it's 27 minus. 27 minus what? Minus 12 times 3, 36. Yeah, 3 cube is 27, 12 times 3, 36, plus 2. So this is minus 9 plus 2, so it's minus 7. Okay. So what is the absolute minimum? This is the absolute, this is the smallest. We should call it small m, so small m minus 14. This will be the capital, absolute maximum. This is capital M equal to what he wants. He wants 8, capital M plus small m, which is what? 8 times 2, 16 minus 14, which is 2. So that will be the answer. Yeah. As I said, we have different functions. I think we did. Ah, it's repeating it. Yeah, so the answer is then. Yeah, he want the sum. Okay, and we did only the absolute minimum. Yeah, so absolute minimum is then then three over four. Yeah, and this is will be the absolute maximum. This will be the absolute maximum. So what he want the sum of these two. So we have capital M then three, small m then 3 over 4. I think you can do it. Huh? Well, the same thing we did. Huh? So this is absolute minimum. This is an absolute maximum. This is the, this is the, the, the greatest. OK. Now you want what? You want the sum of these two. Uh, so it's playing with this uh, yeah, calculation. So you have len the product of these two, which is 9 over 4. And that will be done. OK. Yeah, then embers. Okay, let us see what will happen here. Yeah, as I said, we have different functions, different flavors. Okay. I have the domain. The function is continuous. Tan inverse is always continuous. Huh? Tan inverse, we know the graph of tan inverse, which is doing something like this. It's always continuous. Yeah. So what is f prime? We'll find f prime. It will be 1 minus 1 over 1 plus x squared which is what? 1 plus x squared minus 1 over 1 plus x squared, which is x squared over 1 plus x squared. Yeah, this is never 0. So this is equal to 0, so I have x equal 0. Mm -hmm. So critical numbers, uh, x equal to 0. By the way, it's uh, it's part of the, part of the, what do you call it? The endpoints. Okay. So two I will do nothing. Three I can't I can't find f at zero, but let me do it in the end. F at zero is what? Zero minus tan inverse zero. That will be zero. Okay. F at four. That will be four minus tan inverse four. Uh -huh. Now which is bigger? Four or tan inverse four? Mm -hmm. Don't forget, this tan inverse always bounded between pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. So tan inverse for any value x cannot exceed pi over 2. And pi over 2 is what? 1 point something, 1 point something, 1 point 5, 7, something like this. It's something. Yeah, cannot cannot go to 4. So this is positive. So very clear for me that this is will be the absolute maximum. Oh, yeah, this is the absolute minimum, sorry. 
that will be that sort of consistency deposit. So this is bigger than this one. And this is will be my absolute maximum. I want to be at, at what value? Okay, so the absolute minimum will be at x equal zero, and this is at x equal four. So since I figure out this is one greater than this one, greater than zero. So I have absolute maximum at x equal four, and absolute minimum at x equal zero. Yeah, let us do more problems. I have this function, cosine plus sine. Mm -hmm. Nice one. Yeah. yeah, it has it has some tricks. Okay, now the absolute maximum. The function is continuous. Nothing to worry about. So I'll do f prime. A. That will be minus two sine x plus two cosine two t. Um, I'm saying t, not x. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. Now, how to solve this? I have 2 cosine 2t two minus sine t. How to solve this equation? Equal to 0. Yeah, because it's a differentiable everywhere. Nothing to worry about. So, if, if prime will always exist. How to solve such an equation? Hmm. The trick is what? I know cosine 2t uh, formulas for cosine double angle. It will be cosine square, sorry, cosine square x minus sine square x. And it's also equal 1, 2 minus sine square x. Since I make this 1 minus cosine square, if I make this 1 minus cosine square, it will be 2 cosine square x minus 1. Okay, what is better to have this cosine to x? If I put this, I have cosine square and sine square, that will make it complicated. If I have this, I have cosine square and sine t, that will also make it complicated. But if I put this one, I have only sine square. So that gives me 1 minus 2 sine square x. 2 cannot be 0, so I'll ignore it. Minus sine t is equal to 0. So I have this equation, which is 2, multiply by minus, 2 sine square. Yeah, everything is t, huh? 2 sine square plus sine t minus 1 equal to 0. Can I solve this one? Let me try. Yeah, this is factor it, minus sine t. This is sine t. Right, this is to be minus. So this is plus 1, uh, minus 1, sorry. Uh, no, plus 1, and this is minus 1. Am I right? Yeah, 2 sine square minus sine plus 2 sine plus sine minus 1 equal to 0. Yes. So to get the to get the critical number, so this is my first step. So sine t equals half and sine t equals minus 1. So don't forget, this is half only the first quadrant. Sine t equal half means t equal pi over 6. Sine t equal minus 1 cannot be in the negative. So this is, yeah, in this interval. So this is, I just ignore it. So I have only t equal pi over 4. So I will find f of pi over 4, pi over 6, sorry, pi over 6. That give me what? 2 cosine pi over 6. 2, yeah, let me write. In, yeah, 2 cosine pi over 6 plus sine pi over 3. So that will be what? Cosine pi over 6 is what? The square root 3 over 2. And this is square root 3 over 2 also. Yeah. Sine 60 is square root 3 over 2. Cosine 30 is also square root 3 over 2. So that will be square root of 3 plus square root 3 over 2, which is 3 square root of 3 over 2. Okay. Yeah. Now let me check the others. The, the end point, f at what, 0, cosine 0 is 1, and sine 0 is 0, so that will be 2. You want one absolute maximum, okay. 4, oh, not 4, five, uh, f at the other end point, which is f at pi over 2. Yeah, be careful. That will be 2 cosine pi over 2, which is 0, plus sine pi which is also zero, so that will be zero. 
OK, so I need to check this one and this one, which is bigger. Mm -hmm. How to do that? Now, let me try to do it here. I have three square root of three over two. This is two, I can make it four over two. Yeah, so for sure this one will be greater than four because this one is three times 1.7 something. This is more more than well, it's 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 nearer to, to two than 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 one square root of three. So for sure this one will be bigger. So for sure this one will be will be bigger. So what is the absolute maximum? What the absolute maximum will be this. This is the absolute maximum. So this is the, the, the answer. Okay. Yeah. I have the function continuous. So check f prime. That will be six x squared minus six x minus twelve. I can take six common factor x squared minus six minus two, which is six. Yeah, this is the interval. Actually, continuous everywhere. X minus two mm -hmm. times x plus one. Am I right? Yeah, minus two x plus x is minus x minus two x squared. That equal to zero. So I have x equal two or x equal minus one. Both are in the interval. Yeah, both are in this interval. This is my first step finding the critical numbers. Yeah. Now my second step, I check F at two. Oh, do the calculation. Two times eight, that is 16. Three times four, minus 12, minus 24. Okay. So it's minus 36, that will be minus 20. Okay. Now check F at minus 1. F at minus 1 will be what? Minus 2, minus 3, plus 12. And that will be 7. Okay. Now check the endpoints. F of minus 2. Yeah. F minus 2, that will be minus 16. Minus, you want what? Small, small, yeah, absolute not absolute minimum. Yeah, minus 12 plus 24. Am I right? Yeah, 2 times minus 8, which is minus 16, minus 3 times 4, minus 12 plus 24, minus 12 times, yeah. So I have what? This is minus 28 plus 24. That give me what? Minus 28 plus 24. That give me minus 4. Now check if I three. If I three will be what? Two times three cubed. Three cubed twenty-seven times two. That will be fifty-four. Three cubed minus twenty-seven minus twelve. Twelve times three minus thirty-six. Yeah, that give me what? Calculation. Yeah. Okay, fifty-four minus twenty-seven. This is twenty-seven. Minus 36, this will be minus 9. Okay, so what is the absolute maximum? What is the absolute minimum? This is the absolute minimum. This is the smallest. Which is, this is the small m. Small m is the absolute minimum. Yeah, minus 20. And this is will be the absolute maximum. Which is m equals 7. He want what? The sum of these two. So I have minus 20 plus 7, or 7 minus 20, who cares? 7 minus 20, and that give me minus 13. So this will be the answer. 